Hi, I'm Nate, product specialist from Hydoff North America, and today I'm going to show you how to install your HiVap Ultimate Control with an RPM regulated pump. Step one, we're going to remove the transportation lock with the size 3 metric Allen. Once the transportation lock is removed, the drive is going to lift up. So to make it easier on myself, I'm going to put one hand on top of the drive while I remove the first screw. Once the drive has lifted all the way up, I'm going to remove the second two screws. Step two, we're going to attach the control box and control unit to the back of our high bat. We're going to start with the control unit that includes your relief valve and your vacuum sensor. And that will be attached using two threaded screws that will come with it into this upper two slots there. You can start by inserting those threaded screws about halfway in, and then sliding your control unit over, pulling down, and then you can tighten those screws down so there will be no movement from this back control unit. Once that has been attached, you can move on over to your control box. It'll slide on right here and is attached using two T20 screws. Once these have both been attached, we can plug everything in. This gray cord will be for your aeration relief valve. That's at the top. And the second cord will be for your vacuum sensor, which will be the third slot. And then lastly, the control box interfaces into the unit through the plug on the side labeled control box high vap. Step three, we're gonna add the evaporation flask to our high vap. While we're here though, we're gonna first attach the high vap itself to the heating bath using this IP67 screwing cable. It slots right in the back here, lines with the notches, and can be screwed on fairly easily. That is so at any time you can remove the bath for filling and emptying. Once that's been screwed on, I'm gonna pull the bath out a little bit since we will be using a five liter flask. We're gonna remove the screw connection and tension spring from the left side, where we'll find our vacuum seal. And we're gonna remove our swing clamp with its easy clip. We remove that because inside you will find your clamping sleeve. This clamping sleeve slots over your vapor tube and prevents glass on metal contact inside your unit. The reason why we removed the screwing clamp and the tension spring is because we want to hold down that seal while pushing this through to prevent any of the lips from being bent in. After that, we can add back on the easy clip by holding this lock button. and then unscrew the clip portion of this two-piece device. Open up the swing and grab your evaporating flask. Slide it over your vapor tube, clip down, and tighten. Step four, we will be assembling the glassware on our high vap. We'll start with our G3XL condenser. From the box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have attached four GL14s with barbed connectors, and two GL18 caps. Once that is done, you will take that screwing clamp that we removed in the last step and slide it over this connection. Following that, the tension spring that was included will go around to prevent it from sliding off. You'll take that and connect it to your drive. can now add our extra condenser support. First, by taking the flat edge and slotting it into this hole in the drive, where you'll find a hand tightening screw, which you can tighten to lock that in securely. Then take the boss head. I recommend loosening the part that goes around the condenser first, 
pulling that over before trying to get it around the rod. Loosen those up, pull it down to about the halfway mark or wherever you choose and tighten everything up. Help make sure your larger condenser won't fall. Following that, you can attach our three liter flask. Connects to this ball joint with a clamp that you can tighten so it will not open. Step five, we're going to attach our HiVap Ultimate panel to our HiVap. You're gonna see a white notch on the back of the panel and the white notch on the cable on your HiVap. They're going to slot into each other to connect and you're going to slide this cable back down through the hole, line up the four slots and push down until you hear a click. Step six, we're going to attach our chiller to our condenser. The first thing we're going to do is cut two pieces of tubing that are the length from your condenser to where you'll be housing your chiller. When attaching the tubing to your chiller, it's important that you use these ring clamps that come in the tubing set provided with your high vap glassware. This ring clamp will slot over the tube, and after you attach the tube to the barbed connector, will be pulled over the barbed connector and using a flathead or Phillips screwdriver or a flathead or Phillips screw, um, screw gun, and tighten that so the tube will not pop off due to the pressure. You will do the same thing with your second piece of tubing. And ensure it's not gonna pull off. Now we're going to attach the tubing that we just attached to our chiller to our condenser. And due to its dual coil design, it doesn't matter which of these two connections is in or out. We're gonna put the clamping ring over the tube first. Slide the tube over the barbed connector. Bring up the ring clamp and clamp it down. And we'll do the same thing with our second piece of tubing. Step seven, we'll be attaching our vacuum lines from our vacuum pump to our condenser. We'll be going from our Rotovac Vario Tech pump to the control unit control unit to the condenser, and then the condenser back to the vacuum gauge. You're first gonna to wanna to cut three pieces of tubing to match all three of those lengths required. First one will depend on where you're gonna to wanna to keep your vacuum pump. Once you have those cut, you'll connect one piece tubing to your Variotech pump, to the bottom slot on your vacuum control unit. Second, you will connect the other side of the unit. This is your aeration valve, three two-way valve, to one of the two upper slots on your condenser. And last, you'll connect your vacuum sensor to the other available slot on your condenser. That's the vacuum line, lastly, we need to connect our pump to our control box, given that this is a Vario Tech pump and it regulates itself based off of what the HiVap tells it to. It's got a cable connected to it and goes into this bottom slot labeled vacuum pump. Step eight, attaching common accessories to your HiVap. So I'm gonna be showing you three of the most commonly used accessories that will be going with your HiVap. The first being a ventilation and replenishment valve. This will replace your manual aeration valve. And what this guy will do is slot into your evaporation flask on one end using another piece of tubing that you will cut to the length required to connect from this part of the valve to your product vessel. And thirdly, what will then happen is by loosening this valve, the internal vacuum in the system will suck up your product into the evaporation flask 
so you can refill it without needing to remove that flask. The second most commonly used accessory with their high vamp is the auto accurate sensor. This sensor will replace this GL18 cap up here, slide through your coils, and plug in to the side of your high vap drive. What this sensor enables is automatic evaporation through our dynamic auto accurate function. Lastly, the third accessory that is commonly used with the rotary evaporators is an RS-232 cable that will connect your high vap to your chiller so you can operate your chiller's cooling parameters from your high vap ultimate panel. First, we're going to connect our RS-232 cable to the control box right here and clamp it down with the screws. The other end of your RS-232 cable will connect to the back of the chiller right here and screw in as well. Thank you for watching the video on how to install your HiVap Ultimate Control with an RPM regulated pump. Again, I am Nate, Prox Specialist from Hydolf North America, and if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to me at the contact information below. Thank you.